Hello and welcome back to Louis Bertou's Music Reviews. Today I'm tackling Julia Holter's Tragedy. So, ten years on, I thought I'd offer my thoughts on one of Julia Holter's potentially more underrated albums. 2011's Tragedy is a far cry from the avant chamber pop of a record like Have You In My Wilderness. On that record, the musical ideas are a lot more contained in conventional song forms and shorter songs overall. Moreover, the sound is more consistent over the record's duration and is a lot more refined, I'd say. Tragedy, by comparison, is a lot more experimental and each of the songs here seem to offer a different experience almost. I found this record definitely requires multiple listens to really understand, since there's nothing really much else to compare it to sonically. Like this, the best reference point for this album is really itself. Self, 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 self. While Halter went on to find her sound a little bit more on later records, I feel, I still really enjoy the experiments and ideas put down on tragedy. I find them exciting and highly listenable, really. And I'm not the only one. Italian music critic Piero Scaruffi ranked this album as one of the top ten best of the decade, along with Aviary. Similarly, the, the author of Chris's Eternity Tank on Discogs saw fit to rank two of this album's songs as veritable eureka moments. By the way, I'll put links to both of those in the description below. In fact, while you're down there, feel free to comment. Did you like this album? What did you think of it? Um, I'd like to know, really. Anyway, back to the review. Uh, the sound, I find, has elements of synth pop, most obviously in the little um, electronic drum machines. However, there's also sort of treated ambient noise going on, as well as live strings and a lot of non-musical sound effects as well, that all seem to sort of come together on this record tragedy. It's like a sound collage synth pop album, which is a combination that might not work in everyone's hands, but in Halter's the music's always interesting and is sometimes compelling as well, which I'll go into later. So let's talk a bit about the songs, eh? The individual tracks on this record. There are eight of them, and it's kind of split, the record is kind of split into two halves, with a, a short opening song to open each side, I guess. The first side opens with Introduction. It's kind of a collection of dislocated and abrupt sounds. Like you've got a crackling string section, this really close sounding vocal sample, and even a boat's horn. And it certainly, it doesn't give anything away as to the direction that this record's going in. However, I find it quite a, a striking and almost charming introduction to the album, funnily enough. But it's not really until about a minute into the next song, Make Yourself a Work of Art, that I think we really have something to hold on to as listeners. At about 1 minute 32 of that track, there's this, this quite evocative semitone shift on the strings, which seems to really propel the music forwards, and then we're suddenly met with a steady drum beat, which really seals the deal. deal. The track for the most part sticks to this one harmonic pedal point, so one note. So there's not a great deal of chordal development in this track, it's quite static. And then about halfway through the, the song kind of just descends into this ambient ambient passage which sees the song out. So really um, quite an interesting start to the record I'd say, we certainly haven't been given everything yet, there's things being held back from us that we are desperate to listen to. So yeah, stay tuned. After the wispy outro of the previous track, the third song, Falling Age, seems to come on as if a switch has been flicked, almost. We're met with a harmonic progression this time, as opposed to the rather static chord uh, pedal point of the, the previous track. And it's, it's quite a, a moving chord progression at that, especially when Halter's voice, and indeed the synthesizer, breaks through from that aural filter around, I've written it down, 1 minute 13. Uh, I say it's quite a pretty chord progression, however, things take a, a turn for the hellish around the two minute mark, when this harmonic cloud subtly gets filtered in through the mix, almost like a wave of anxiety. It really sweeps the track off its feet, providing quite a sharp left turn for the listener. But one of the more powerful sound images, I think, on the song, one of a few actually. Take the string entry around 4 minutes 21 that immediately warrants a shift in the harmony underneath. Feels almost like a rug has been pulled out from under us. It's interesting. Or the wonderful snippet of melody that comes in in the bass around 4 minutes 33. 
it's like a glint of something recognisable um, amongst the chaos, and then suddenly the chaos takes over again as this B flat in the violin gets played and really creates quite quite a dissonance. That B flat does resolve to an A, and after that the, the track kind of cools down a little bit, and we're for the last three minutes at least, given more of a standard, just ambient passage, which is fine, I enjoy it. But really those middle few minutes are my favourite, and it's just really well-written stuff, a great combination of like contemporary composition, ambient, drone, whatever, it's just really powerful music. By comparison, the next track, the synth poppy goddess eyes, sounds like orchestral manoeuvres in the dark, honestly. It's quite a change of pace, but um, really on tragedy anything goes, and I I personally quite enjoy the rather triumphant sounding synth pop of Goddess Eyes to close the side. Then on side B we get Celebration, which in my opinion is another key track on this album. It begins with this simultaneously cold but lush sounding bed of flutes that, and then later strings. Eventually Holter comes in with a hummed vocal delivery, and then I think the, the song begins to gather traction around 3 minutes 30. However, what it does bring up, this track, is two general points as to why I think Tragedy is a really good album. Firstly, there's a great sense of space. Holter is not afraid to let the music breathe, even at the expense of, say, leaving a few seconds of silence here and there. And the other thing is that even though the compositions are quite floaty and unorthodox, you can always tell there's a noticeable shift, I think, between ambient sort of background filler type sounds, and then the actual song itself. I always feel like it's, it's like I say before, like a switch being flicked when the song actually begins. Yeah, a lot of the tracks on here do begin with quite an ambient intro, and then suddenly, like, we're in this song somehow, this fully-fledged song. It's like, well, where did that come from? I mean, I'm, I'm glad it came, but, um, like, the transitions are definitely bold, and I, I do enjoy them. There's this great moment as well on the track, Celebration, at 6 minutes 50, when what sounds like a voice sings a note, However, when there's more notes played after it, you realise it's actually a saxophone, and um, it gets me every time. I'm always like, oh, that's a voice, and then suddenly it's a saxophone. So there's that too. Celebration morphs really well into the next track, Lilies, as well. We get sounds like samples from cars, reversing lorries, reverberant discussion, and eventually a mic check from one and only Julia Holter herself. There's even some running water and birdsong samples, so we're, we're properly treated to a sound collage on this track, Lilies, and I mean, I personally say that's never a bad thing. I think it's quite refreshing to hear some non-musical sounds after, after some musical ones. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, but I'm going to keep going. I hope you're still with me. Finale, however, sees a return to those wonderful thick-sounding synth chords that we heard on The Falling Age, track 3. Um, and the vocal delivery as well is quite is quite striking as well. I find her delivery sort of just bounces around my head when I'm listening to this song. And I particularly love the quirky no note choices, note choices, note choices, as well as the the layering of different styles of vocals in the mix, which I think is very successful here. Like around the three minute mark, you have these distant reverberant backing vocals, then some more upfront in your face backing vocals that seem almost at odds to the harmonic progression of the song. And then, of course, you've got Julia Holter's live delivery, which is a lot more spoken. And really, it's just like a, a tapestry of voices. voices. Around 4 minutes 30, a sax solo breathes its way into the mix, and we're away. It's just lovely, lovely music, and a really a great triumphant finale, I think, to this album. I realise I've talked about the whole record here. I was only supposed to pick a few highlight tracks. I guess that goes to show how quality this album really is, and, and also how long this review probably will be as well. Oh well. Overall, Tragedy is quite an experience, and while it's one that I might not um, experience all that often, just because it is so esoteric, I do love just the combination of sounds on this record. It really runs the gamut, like you've got everyday noise sounds, you've got acoustic instruments, you've got um, electronic or more processed ambient sound, and then the voice as well to tie everything together. And yeah, despite that, it's not overbearing, the sound is actually quite listenable, I'd say. I'm just glad that there's artists like Julia Holter making great music like this and continuing to make great music like this to see us through the, the modern age. And yeah, that wraps up my thoughts just about on Julia Holter's tragedy. 
I'm going to rank this album a light 9 out of 10. Yeah, you could see me deciding there. I didn't know whether to give it a strong 8 or a light 9, but I'm going with a 9, and yeah. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next review. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.